Uh, welcome to my channel. So in this video, there are two goals. The first goal is we are going to uh, go through the solution about this problem. And the second goal is at the end of this video, I'm going to briefly cover the procedure we should follow in the real code interview. So let's get started. Before we start the real content for the day, uh, I would really appreciate that if you can help subscribe this channel because it can help me to grow. So thank you a lot. Let's start with through this problem. So in a campus represented as a 2D grade, there are n workers and m bikes. So with n smaller equal to m, each worker and the bike is a 2D coordinate on this grade. So our goal is to assign a bike to each worker. So among the available bike and workers, we choose the worker bike pair with the shortest amount of the distance between each other and design the bike that to the worker. So if, the, if there are multiple worker bike pairs with the same shortest amount of distance, we choose a pair with the smallest worker index. So if there are multiple ways to do that, it is a pair with the smallest bike index. So essentially it is like, a, um, it's like a, a ranking first based on Manhattan distance, then based on the uh, worker index, and then based on the bike index. So repeat this process until there are no available workers. So the Manhattan distance between two points, P1 and P2, is uh, computed in this way. So return a uh, vector answer of length n, where answer i is the index, zero index of the bike that uh, i's worker is assigned to. All right, so see this example, we assigned, um, we assigned, we assigned worker zero with bike one and worker one with bike zero. Okay, that makes sense. So let's see the constraints. So it said that uh, workers and bike height is between zero to 1000. So all the worker and bike location are distinct and the uh, worker uh, lens is smaller or equal to bike lens. And uh, both are between one to 1000, okay? So um, if we think about some profile solution, what we could do is we could uh, compute all the worker and bike pairs and try to sort it uh, based on uh, based on uh, the based on the distance first, and then worker index, then uh, bike index. Let's say there are uh, let's say there are n workers and m bikes. So it is going to be n m n times m times log n m. So that's um, uh, that's something brute force. So but uh, you can see that. Um, the index of like the grade for uh, worker, so the grade uh, for the whole map is between zero to 1000. So in that case, the map, the whole map is uh, has limited size. So instead of like using some uh, quick sort exactor, what we could do is we, we could use bucket sort. So bucket sort, uh, it is going to be more efficient than that. So for the bucket sort, because there is a limited number of the buckets, uh, so the runtime is going to be O N M N times M. So we save a log uh, for this algorithm. So let's go through this piece of code. Um, so it's, it, at the first, or at the very beginning, we define a class called worker bike. Uh, we have the worker index and bike index. And then we define a helper function to compute the distance between two points. So then we assign bike. Uh, we have the list of the buckets first, which is used in the bucket sort later on. So we initialize the buckets. And then for uh, each worker and bike pair, we compute the distance and put uh, the corresponding thing into the, into the bucket. And then uh, we have the, uh, the, the worker set and the bike set to indicate whether the worker or the bike has been used before. So if it has been used, then we just skip it. Otherwise, we could potentially use that. And then we go through the other buckets uh, from the smallest bucket to the largest bucket. And then um, we will try to assign uh, the worker, the bike to the worker. So if the worker or the bike has been assigned, then we just skip. Otherwise, we need to uh, update the assigned worker and assigned bike, and then assign the bike to the worker. And then finally, we just return it. So the whole thing is going to be O and uh, O M N. 
So uh, having said that, uh, I think that's pretty much about the question and the solution. But uh, let's cover the next part, which is the general procedure for a coding interview. So in a coding interview, you usually start to understand the problem. Um, so don't jump into the coding part too quickly. Try to fully understand the problem and think about the edge case first. And the second goal is the second part is to you need to uh, think about the ideas to solve this problem. Uh, try to do some runtime space analysis to convince the interviewer that uh, it is an efficient one, and also get an agreement before you start to do the coding part. So for coding, care about the correctness, readability, and also don't be too slow. And the last one, don't forget to do the testing because some interview some interviewees just forget this part. Uh, testing is very important because this can help guarantee your correct, the correctness of the code and also it can make the code to be more maintainable in the future. So that's it for uh, this uh, coding question and this uh, video. So if you liked this video, uh, please help subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments below. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.